Good morning, brothers and sisters at Word of Life Church. Uh, Pastor Dave again assigned me to give, to give you the devotional this morning. In one church anniversary, there were representatives from different age groups who were assigned to deliver the Psalm 23 as they, may, as they are being memorized. The first contestant was a young man and he was engaged in a in a high school drama club or a theater guild. The second contestant was a senior citizen. And so the young man came up and he said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul and leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And there was a big applause from the congregation. Then a senior citizen, age 77, came up with a slump back and then with a creaky voice. And he recited the 23rd Psalm, The Lord is my shepherd, until the 6th verse. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And there was silence from the congregation. And a young man stood up, who was a member of the drama club, and he declared before the congregation, Surely I know the psalm, but this man, noble man, knows the shepherd. What is it in Psalm 23 that we know about God, that we can describe him as good? In the first two verses, David declared, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That means I will lack nothing. He made me to lie down in green pastures. David considered himself as a sheep and God is his divine shepherd. So the pastures are for the feeding of the sheep. That is the solid intake. And then when he needs water, he leadeth me beside the still waters. So it's both the solid and the liquid intake to feed him. And then if David is depressed, he declared in verse 3, He restores my soul. And then if he is confused, he needs direction. If life seemed meaningless or empty or just no direction at all, he declared, He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake and then in the moment of danger in the moments of calamity of plagues of war of terrors and other storms of life david said in verse 4 yes though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And also God assured him of buffet or abundance, grace and blessings, even if there are enemies that surround him. God said, come on, David, enjoy, celebrate my presence. The battle is not yours. They are my enemies. The battle is mine. Just go ahead, David. Enjoy the food. He said in verse 
5, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. This refers to God's choice. In the old times, even in old England and other monarchy uh, monarchs in, in Europe, if the king is crowned, there is always a ceremonial pouring of oil. And in the time of David, the prophet Nathan or uh, Samuel anoint, anointed David and also with King Saul, his predecessor, with oil. That is a symbol of God's choice, giving them authority, giving them power, giving them honor and glory as part of the God's commission for them to lead people with love, to lead people with compassion, to lead people the way God intended them to govern people. And the last verse which is the main focus of this devotional, is the assurance. Surely goodness and mercy in King of the authorized King James Version shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, as I understand this, the first phrase of verse 6 refers to our temporal life our life on earth that we are being assured by God that if he is our shepherd it's just like the right hand and the left hand surely goodness in the new international version it is described as surely goodness and love shall follow me all the days of my life even there's a pandemic we can always feel God's goodness Pastor Dave has always mentioned that the theme of God's goodness in the midst of crisis, Sunday after Sunday, and it should penetrate our being, it should penetrate our soul, that despite this coronavirus pandemic, God's goodness will shine. Because we are being assured by God that surely, goodness and love will follow us all the days of our life and the word and there is the transition between the temporary life and the eternal life if we are infected with a virus whether we live or we die no problem because David in the second phrase of verse 6 and that means then we are already cut off with our temporal life there is the final perfect destiny. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, in the book of Gary Chapman called The Five Love Languages, when Jesus walks on, the, on this planet, on this ministry years, the last three years of his life, age 30 to 33, it was Jesus who was providing people, dispensing love, and the love languages that Gary Chapman mentioned was quality time. So Jesus spent quality time with James, Peter, and John in the resurrection of that young girl. They were there. At the Mount of Transfiguration, the three of them were selected to be with Jesus when Jesus displayed his divinity with Moses and Elijah on his side. And then, at the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ prayed for himself, prayed for his disciples, and prayed for all the believers that will believe in the message of his disciples. That includes us. So Jesus Christ was interceding for everyone. That includes our generation. The three of them were nearest to him. But they were already sleeping, and they were not. Only John recorded that prayer in John chapter 17 but the three of them James Peter John Jesus Christ spent quality time with them that is a manifestation of love and then another um, language of love was the physical touch 
Jesus Christ touched Peter, pulling him out of the water so that he will not be drowned. That was an act of love. Jesus Christ also touched the blind man and there was also mud that he, uh, he rubbed the eyes of that blind man and that blind man was able to see. That miraculous touch of Jesus Christ changed the life of that blind man forever or for all his life. And also Jesus Christ touched that dead girl and there was a miracle. That miraculous touch that brings that lifeless body to life. Another manifestation of the love of Christ is the words of affirmation. When there was a woman that was accused of adultery, falsely accused of adultery, because adultery involves two bodies, and why was only the woman presented by this priest to Jesus? And then they were trying to stone her to death, and then Jesus Christ said, Let him who sin not cast the first stone. It was affirming to that woman. And then after all of them gradually went away, Jesus Christ and told another affirming word. Woman, go and sin no more. So there was quality time, physical touch, words of affirmation, and then the fourth is acts of service. Jesus Christ has conducted a lot of service as an act of love. Healings, preachings, driving out demons, from demon-possessed persons. And then there was also, uh, he was also doing resurrections. These services were acts of love by Jesus Christ. And then there was the giving of gifts. Of course, 5,000 people were given food. That was free. There was no payment. It was a gift. It was a donation. It was an act of love. Jesus Christ know that there was Stomachs are hungry, so he gave them food to it. 5,000 people were fed. And one man was also given the gift of perseverance. Saul of Tarsus, when he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, Jesus Christ told him, You will speak for me before Gentiles, and you will suffer for my name's sake. That's why Paul was able to suffer persecutions. He was able to survive three days and three nights on the sea. And then there was also shipwreck. And he was able to survive. There was a lot of pain and sufferings and hardships that Paul was able to endure. To endure until such time that he was beheaded in Rome. So he was able to undergo all the pain o siguro kung kining panahon na napa si Paul sa atong panahon dili to malisan og coronavirus magapadayon kanto siya because he was given the gift of perseverance mga igsuon i will like, i would like to add two more number 6 i would like to add prayer jesus christ prayed for his disciples jesus christ prayed for us he is now interceding for us while He is now in heaven. So He is the great intercessor. And this is a manifestation of love. When we prayed for our wife, when we prayed for our children, when we prayed, when we pray for everyone, kings, governor Gwyn, President Duterte, Donald Trump, Putin of Russia, when we prayed for people that is a manifestation of our love for people and uh, number seven the promise of his presence when jesus said i will never leave i will be with you always up to the end of the age in niv surely i am with you always to the very end of the age that is a wonderful promise Equivalent to the Old Testament promise in Joshua, I will never leave you nor forsake you. It is an act of love. Brothers and sisters, how much do we show love? And surely 
goodness and love will be with us always. And after this life, we are assured it's perfect security. We will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, how we praise you and we thank you, O Lord, that despite this crisis, this coronavirus pandemic, we are assured, O Lord, of your goodness, that surely goodness and love will follow us all the days of our lives. And Lord, if ever we will be infected and we will die, we are being assured, O God, of that perfect security that we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So Lord, if we live, we live for you. And if we will die, we will die for you. Whether we live or we die, we are going to be with you. We just thank you, Lord, for this assurance. We know, O oh God, that only you can solve this pandemic. Only you is our hope. And we thank you for your words, O oh God. You said in 2 Chronicles 13 and 14, When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, and this is our perfect response, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then i will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land lord god heavenly father you are the only solution to this problem this pandemic cannot be solved by president duterte president trump Governor Garcia and other leaders of Lord. Walang gi maayo ni ining problema karon sa tibok kalibutan. And Lord, we know that this problem has crept into our hearts, O oh God. Some of us may be depressed for this extended quarantine time. Some of us expect that quarantine will only last for two weeks, two months, but we do not know, O oh God, how long maybe two years or more. So Lord, let us help us to focus on you, that you are our only hope, that you are our only assurance, and thank you for your presence. You have assured us, O oh Lord, with your goodness. You have assured us, O oh Lord, that you will be with us always to the end of the age. We praise you and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Good morning.